The overturning of Roe versus Wade signals that elected officials, not judges, will actually decide on abortion. Now, Justice Samuel Alito wrote the following in his leaked draft opinion. Quote, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. Even the liberal justice, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, agreed with him. She pointed out that Roe invited no dialogue with legislatures. It seemed entirely to remove the ball from the legislators court. Joining us now to break down what this ruling really means and what we can expect our all-star company, president of the Judicial Crisis Network and former law clerk to Justice Clarence Thomas, Kerry Severino, and former law clerk for Justice Neil Gorsuch and founder of the Article 3 Project, Mike Davis. Thank you both for being with us. Kerry, I want to start with you. The left has been arguing that this has been the law for 50 years. It's a precedent and there's no reason to overturn it. Um, Explain to me and to the viewers why, just because it's a precedent, you, should, you shouldn't be able to overturn it. Hey, look, every member of the court has overturned precedent at one point or another. And certain precedents, like Roe, particularly cry out to be overturned because they are so egregiously wrong. Um, it's funny because some of the people complaining about overturning precedent just yesterday, some of these same justices were uh, undercutting uh, longstanding precedent on the Second Amendment. And so, you know, it, I think it's just a matter of uh, stare decisis, that is respect for precedent for thee, but not for me. What the court has done is these are justices who've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution. That means when there is a case that is egregiously wrong, they do need to overturn it, just as the court did in Brown versus Board of Education. They overturned the separate but equal decision. That had been around for over 50 years, but sometimes you just have to make sure the court is in, in keeping with the correct Constitution. I, I, I'm glad you brought up that because I kept thinking to myself, all of these folks on the left um, would normally want things decided by elected bodies, not by courts. And today they were all like, the court undid an injustice. And I'm like, no, you would normally want an elected body to decide. And it was funny listening to them argue something that they normally wouldn't argue. Mike, I want to play for you something the president said earlier. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. Personal freedoms are on the ballot. The right to privacy, liberty, equality, they're all on the ballot. Until then, I will do all of my power to protect a woman's right in states where they will face the consequences of today's decision. Okay, so what, what they're trying to make the case, Mike, is that all of these other freedoms, uh, gay marriage and everything else is on the ballot. And the court, though, made it very clear that, that that decision was very specific about abortion and nothing else. So what do you make of the statements from the president and Nancy Pelosi that this decision is about contraception, gay marriage, and everything else? Well, Justice, if you read Justice Kavanaugh's concurring opinion, he made it very clear that those issues are not on the table in this case. And so I think this is just political hysteria to try to whip up their uh, their their supporters to show up and vote this November when the president has done a horrific job. We have out of control inflation, crime out of control. The economy is on the wrong track. The country's on the wrong track. And so if the Democrats want to run on abortion, go for it. Kerry, um, we're already hearing that that um, this is now going to play out on the state level. Walk me through what that means legally. Like, are states going to sue each other? Um, the president's saying that they're going to uh, issue executive orders. Walk me through kind of both scenarios. Yeah, so when the Constitution doesn't speak to something and it doesn't include a right to abortion, that means that the states and the federal government in some cases are um, able to legislate in that area. So now we go back and say, okay, what are the state laws on that uh, on this issue? Some states have laws that were on the books before Roe uh, that protect life, and many of those are coming back into effect. Some states have passed laws <laughs> saying, okay, if Roe is ever overturned, this is how we want uh, life to be protected in our state. And so many of those are coming to effect. Some of them say they'll come into effect 30 days after it, after Roe is overturned. Um, so not all of them are online yet, but but that's the way they'll proceed. Many other states have laws that, that are at least as protective of abortion as Roe is. And so those law in those law countries, you know, California's, the New York's, the world, you're going to have as much or more access to abortion than before this decision. We're seeing that a lot of places, uh, they're actually broadening abortion access in the, in, in the 
face of this. So it will go back to the states. Now people have the opportunity to lobby their legislators, um, their state and their federal legislators. What do you th- want your abortion law to look like? How do you want to balance um, all of these interests? How but do you want to help provide sue? for women who aren't able to have abortions? I think a lot of states are going to be doing that as well. And then, of course, there's the state court question, just as the federal court read and invented a right into the Constitution. Um, there are state courts who are uh, at risk for doing this as well, and some that already have, like Kansas recently have. So I think that's going to be another time to remember. State courts are incredibly important here. We need to make sure we have courts that are also going to be faithful to the rule of law at the state level. Mike, are, 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 are states going to sue each other, though? Is, is California going to sue Kansas or Florida or Texas and vice versa? You're going to see uh, some of those issues come up. I would just say after this ruling, as Kerry said, this goes back to the state legis- legislatures. If you don't like uh, if you don't like abortion restrictions, move to California. If you don't like COVID restrictions, move to Florida. We have 50 laboratories of democracy. Roe versus Wade was the most undemocratic ruling you can get out of a, a court. Five unelected, lifetime appointed, pay protected judges in Washington, D.C., did to decide abortion regulations for 50 years. That's clearly wrong as a matter of law. And now the American people can work with their state legislature, state legislatures and decide abortion regulations in their states. I want you guys to both weigh in on this real quickly. You both have been uh, clerks to some of the top justices. What, what does this decision do to the safety and security of these folks? Carrie, I'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm outraged that we still, well, the president has said, let's have peaceful protests. He still hasn't condemned protesting at the right. justices' <clears throat> homes. I was on, on Twitter today asking people to remove tweets that are the doc, continuing to dox the justices. And we know from Justice Kavanaugh's experience, there is a serious risk to their lives. That was an attempted assassination. I know there's, they've been increasing security, and thankfully, after long last, uh, they're incre- they they passed a bill adding security for the justices' families, but it's it's outrageous. We haven't seen more action defending them uh, from this administration, and I, I hope that that changes and that our justices can be kept safe. They're just trying to do their job and enforce the Constitution. Mike, I got thirty seconds. So the Attorney General Merrick Garland should should face impeachment proceedings when House Republicans take over in January. He is clearly ignoring 18 U.S.C. 1507 obstruction of justice for these abortion industry activists protesting, intimidating justices and their families at their homes. As Kerry said, it led to an assassination attempt. He, the attorney general needs to be held accountable. Mike, Kerry, I couldn't ask for two better guests than you guys today. You are the most insightful people on some of the most consequential rulings. Uh, and, and today, I, I'm grateful that you are sharing your time with our viewers. Thank you both. Have a great weekend. Thank, Thank you. you.